No, nah, so you know the, the crazy stuff going on in the world today, right, is the, is the great resignation. So, you know, it's something we're working through, obviously minimizing any turnover because we don't want that at all. And then, but also at this point too, I mean, everyone's going through the issues. Everyone's got to hire new people. So, um, you know, it's, it's been a big focus of ours. We've been doing everything from um, increasing our recruitment efforts, but now we're even doing where we're like, kind of like throwing these staff appreciation parties slash um, recruitment events where it gets people out there to see our culture and everything and, um, you know, really determine if, if they kind of want to join up on the team. And, you know, it's, it's not specific to our field. It's something that any industry, any company can utilize who are desperately in need of, of hiring new people now. Um, now, the, I mean, hell, I think like some of the numbers for the great resignation are like, I don't know, I heard like 53%, and I think it was like 53% of people are like changing fields or something like that. So it's crazy. I mean, we, we've done a pretty good job at minimizing turnover, but, you know, it, I think we're at like 13%, which like the field is much higher than that, but that's still the highest we've ever had. So it's, it's you know, we're going through these issues too and just making sure we're doing everything I can, we can. You know, truth be told, the, the stuff that we're doing can be really used in any industry, um, any company, uh, to really get the employees back that you need to. Um, you know, and we're just, just like everyone else, we're battling the great resignation now. So, you know, there's a lot of things we're doing that could help other people, other companies, and, you know, get the world back to where it was. One of the things that we're trying to hone in on is the uh, successes and, and, and pitfalls that we've encountered as an agency in the hopes that other organizations can kind of mm -hmm. steal some of our knowledge, right? Yep. Because we're going through this thing that everyone's referring to as the great resignation. Mm -hmm. It's this, this time where people are quitting their jobs and either not going back to work or are, are very picky about where they work, rightfully so in a lot of situations. Yep. But that makes being the agency hiring a very, very competitive yes. <laughs> market, right? Yeah. So when we started out in August, we needed to fill 60 school spots. Mm -hmm. We then put on three recruitment events where we probably hired or onboarded, you know, somewhere around 70 people. Um, and it is now October, middle of October, and we still have 60 school spots to fill. Yeah. So I know that math doesn't add up, but essentially <laughs> what that means is that while we were hiring to fill these spots, we got a ton of new spots to fill. Yeah. So that's something we've always, not, I don't want to say struggled with, has been always a goal of ours to fill those spots, right? So for years, we've done our single panel events where it's one or two panels a day, up to six applicants, um, where we could interview about 18 people a week. And we realized that that just wasn't fitting what we needed it to do. We needed way more people than we really could bring in a week. Yeah. So then we started doing these, what I'm, I want to call pop-up recruitment events, because okay, it's like kind that. of like all of a sudden we're going to put on an event, but it's intentional because we identify an area where we really need people, mm -hmm. target that area with our, our Indeed ads and our, you know, our people that work there, and then we get a good group of people just for that area, and we're yeah. having success in hiring more than 18 people a week. Yeah. Um, we're more mm -hmm. towards 30, which is something I think that we can increase and we're working on, but it's a great, it's a great first step. Yeah. So essentially what you're talking about is like scaling, right? right? So it was fine before when we didn't have this huge need for people that to only hire maybe four to six people a week. Right. Now we're at a point where we need to hire like 70 people a week or whatever. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, so it, it'd be impossible for a company to really realize that if they didn't have good systems on the back end that are tracking need for staff and the rate at which staff are recording. Is that something that you're looking at like in terms of the data there? Yeah, so every Tuesday we have our internal recruitment meeting where Joe Carter kind of kind of brings to us what he needs and then we kind of try to match what he's looking for. So whether that mean we start planning one of those pop-up events or do we start targeting our Indeed ads to a different area, just trying to, you know, make those spots full. Since March 2020, it's been a sheer just sheer hell, but the fact that you guys all stuck together and it's, and in Pennsylvania, you guys, I don't know if you know some of these facts, we actually now have 100 clinical associates. Before the pandemic, we had just a handful. Now, under some of the leadership by like, where's Josh Ziegler? Let's give Josh a round of applause, man. <laughs> um, this guy, incredible, yep. What was the thought process behind kind of creating these hiring parties? 
so it actually started, I'd say a couple years ago with um, Carly. We did like a couple of trial runs. We did one for Hackers Ball and they were just kind of like one-off things where we kind of used recruitment as an add-on to what we were doing because it was also a need at the time where more recently we've shifted, we used the same model, we've improved it and we focused more on the recruitment side of things. It's still when we do a staff appreciation event very much for our staff. But my big thing and why I really wanted to revamp them and get them going again is I think as an applicant, when you're coming in, it's great to see our culture. It makes people want to work for us. Right now, we're in a really competitive market where people are interviewing at three or four places. They really get to pick where they want to go. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, are you going to pick the place with a stiff interview or are you going to pick the place where you know that they're doing staff appreciation events, they're doing raffles, they're giving away PTO days. You can see when you come to these events a lot about our culture. You get to mingle with our current staff. So when you start with us, you don't feel like you don't know anyone, mm -hmm. especially when they're regionalized to areas. It gives our applicants an opportunity to just feel like they're kind of coming into our culture before they even get started. It's a lot more personal and they can really see that we take care of our staff. I mean, that's like a textbook, like OBM answer of <laughs> yeah. how, do we, how do we get people in the door? Uh, one of the cool things about these events, you mentioned it, there, there's so many places out there like, I, on the way to work today, I saw a sign for Walmart that said $1,000 sign-on bonus. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, you see those everywhere. One of the cool things I think BDA does is we not only uh, incentivize our applicants to come, but we also provide a, a bonus for our, our staff who refer people yeah. to us, right? How does that work? So we normally send out um, a Google link where our staff can come. If they don't have anyone, they're still welcome to come to our events. We still want to show them that we appreciate them. But if they have a person that's in mind that they think would be a really good fit, then they can bring in as many people as they want. They fill out a Google form where they put in the applicant's um, email, their phone number, and their name. So that way we can still screen them, give them their pre-interview survey and everything we would normally do. So we have information on them before they come in. And then if that staff member ends up working out, we end up hiring them, um, then they would end up getting a referral bonus as well. So it kind of incentivizes both ways. And I think it also makes it easier for an applicant to come in that's you know, a friend that may be on the fence about leaving their job and now they have somebody who they're comfortable with with them at the event to kind of help get them acclimated. They can test out BDA, see if it's a good fit for them. We find a lot of the people that are referrals are people that have considered jumping over and just mm -hmm. weren't quite sure about it. So it's a really good way to bring in those people that are in the in the field or also I personally think it gives greener people an opportunity. Normally there's a lot of people who we screen out because they don't have the experience, but when it's a staff referral and the staff is putting their name on that person and they come in and they have a passion and we can tell that they're going to be a good fit and they have the personality for it, those are people we would give opportunities in our clinics where we really take extra time to train them and it gives people an opportunity who normally wouldn't necessarily make it through our initial screening process. Can you guys all give yourselves a hand? The, the amount of thought, time, and effort that goes into planning these things by um, Kristen Holmbeck, Joe Carter, um, Carly, Liz. Can we give a giant shout out to them? Cardi B, and then <laughs> she's Cardi B, and then raise your hand because that's that's homegirl. Cardi B. Yeah. One of the other things that I really like that you you mentioned was it gives the staff a chance, or the new staff, the interviewing staff, to meet their potential future coworkers. Um, and so often in the field of ADA, you you hear, well, I'm working on an island mm -hmm. where I don't I don't know anyone I work with because I just I go to my one learner's house and I'm there, maybe I see my BCBA every once in a while and that's it. But when you have uh, these events and they, they are honestly like instilled as the norm right away because like my first experience ever with BDA was at this party where I see people having fun together, it makes it really easy for you to say to yourself, okay, well, if that's the culture, I'm never gonna feel like I'm on an island. I think it really starts like when they start with us, 
to not have it be like a fear-based thing of like yes. who are these people, but they see that like our executives are actually people, that they're friendly, they feel more comfortable, that they know their supervisors and the people who are running the organization. Most of the time you don't get that. There's three of us on the recruitment team, Carly, Liz, and I, and we go through over 200 resumes a week. Uh, we go through the resumes, we bring in uh, six to eight people for a panel two nights a week. Um, we do panel interviews here. I think that's, that's like a really creative way to go about hiring because it allows you to, to have two avenues, right? So some people, that, they, they, that social piece of like, I have to go to a party and interview? Like, no way, that's not for me. <laughs> Um, so they, they might be able to go the panel interview route right. um, versus uh, someone like me who'd be like, oh, okay, I can get like a nice beer before I go to the interview, yeah. get those nerves <laughs> out. It, it makes things a lot more more comfortable. Um, so let's let's explore the panel interviews for a second. Well, we do the panel interviews so we see how um, our new hires or our candidates act in a social setting, you know, amongst other people. They're not in competition with one another. As you can see, we're hiring so many, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so... Um, and there's a couple of us that do the interviewing at the same time so that we um, can ask different questions and kind of bounce off of each other. So, so just like a, a little bit more of a natural way to interview and hopefully like people are more themselves and more honest in the yeah. interview. I, I mean, I certainly remember when I had my panel interview and I had no clue what to expect. I showed up in a suit, like a full <laughs> three-piece suit. Me too. <laughs> and then Brett walks out in like sweatpants. Oh yeah, he wears like sweatshorts, a t-shirt, you know. Yeah. It's a but, little, yeah, it's a lot more relaxed than, yeah. you know, one-on-one or... Um, so I know, I mean, this was like six years ago, but Brett was in on my panel and I think he's still around for... Brett wants to be on all the panels. He wants to meet everybody who, you know, we potentially hire because he always says like he would want to make sure that it'd be somebody that would be around he'd want around his children you know his daughter yeah and boys so the reason we may ask you to look at a couple of things or so that you guys can see if the values that we have are in alignment with your values because if they are then it's a good match because it's sort of like you guys need to know about us to make sure you're you got to interview us you know what i mean it's like you guys interviewing us to see are these guys right now i'm not saying i'm right in the head i'm not saying that <laughs> But it is what it is. You always know what I'm thinking. Well, what I found is no matter what, there's every person I meet, like, there's something in the conversation I learn from them every time. So we do the first half of the interview, and then whoever's on the panel, it's usually Carly, I, and Brett, and we go into Brett's office and we kind of talk about who we think's a good fit. We go through and, like, you know, it's, it's good because we discuss things and work um, things out. You're, you're no? Yeah. Nobody yes. Now, I ordinarily would be a no, but I don't know. I, I She's worked in some breaks, crazy places, man. I think she breaks the mold yeah. and she hustles and... She's got a good personality on her. Yeah, she's smart, she hustles, and I feel like that residential experience, man, she knows the grind. Um, I think, we, remember we talked about like delaying starts till September? Yeah. Giving her full, a part-time you know, offer and then your full-time starts in September. Mm -hmm. Or, and if we need her over the summer, then we, you, whatever, but. I think mm -hmm. that once she gets in the school and more of a, if we could peg her for floater roles, kind of based on her teaching cert and everything, I think she would enjoy that. Um, yes, because the so, experience of yep. balancing. Because I, I think, think if she's I, stuck like as a one-to-one, I feel one -to -one, like if you stick her in one classroom, she's she, not going to she, be happy. Yep, she won't be happy because she's going to feel like she took a step down. But if we get her in a floater role, and she's working towards her BCBA and everything, I think. I think she's one hundred. Uh, she's smart, uh, driven, and she even understands the idea that it's a fake contract. I, she, I, yeah, I get that. Yeah. She's the only thing I, I just. Uh, don't like is that we really I think even in the summer we'll need people during the day but that's when she could start oh, I think, yeah, so. so onboarding I mean what does that even mean are we going surfing what's what's the deal like what <laughs> <laughs> so onboarding is hiring of our our new hires in the company so after they are recruited and they go to the interview panel um, and Brett makes them an offer, then we start the onboarding process, which really just means their paperwork and their training. Okay, so 
I'm a, I'm a new applicant. I, I do the, I send in my resume. I do the pre-interview. I go to the interview. I do my post-interview assignment. <laughs> Uh, and then I and then I get dropped into your lap. What what do I expect? Like, what's the first step for me? So Brett will send you an offer email, and in that offer email, there's a lot of information. Uh, we always say that we don't write the long, you know, the long detailed emails uh, because we like to have long detailed emails. Um, it's a lot of information that you're going to need for onboarding and for moving forward in the company. Um, usually, there's something that he wants you to do in those emails, which is responding with your cell phone number and letting us know what option you're picking um, for your pay structure mm -hmm. moving forward. So once you respond to that. Email, email, myself or someone from the onboarding team, there's three of us, myself, Amanda, and Melissa, um, they'll send you your paperwork and that's kind of what gets you started with everything. We'll set you up in Paycom where there's all kinds of instructions and directions for every single piece of paperwork that you'll need. We make it a very independent process as long as you're reading those directions and following the instructions, you'll be able to make it through the process um, fairly easy. We're always looking for that independence throughout the paperwork. Uh, it is set up that way on purpose. Um, it's okay to reach out with questions, of course, but we are looking for uh, red flags, if you will, of people reaching out with questions that are already detailed in the directions mm -hmm. that lets us know that you haven't read the directions. Yeah. Um, it, it is set up to where you can, you can complete it as long as you're following each piece step by step. Um, our current system is nice where you get a piece of directions and then right afterwards you can upload the piece of paperwork. So you'll see the directions for that specific piece, upload the piece of paperwork, and then move on to the next piece of paperwork. Yeah, and I, I think that that's something that anyone can generalize to their, their own organization is we ensure that there's active responding. And it's, it's very low effort behaviors that we need them to engage in, mm -hmm. but they need to respond to everything. Nothing's kind of like spoon fed to them, nothing's handed to them I should say. Um, because it's a it's a quick gauge of like is this person actually going to like follow through with all the all the the nice things they said during their interview? I think of it like politicians. Yeah. Like you, you say all these nice things while you're campaigning, and then once you get the job, like did you do any of them? Yeah. Um, we're looking for that right from the very beginning. Like I said, you know, Brett asked for a couple things in his offer email that you respond with. Mm -hmm. um, and even after we send you the, the emails for onboarding, there's a couple pieces that you have to respond. Just letting us know that you received each piece of paperwork is an active piece of responding that we're looking for from the very beginning. Is there anything that happens, like they, they do all their, their paperwork, and then after that, is there any sort of next steps that they're, they're being tracked on as part of the on onboarding process? Yeah, so once all of their paperwork is turned in, we will review it. That is one of my main jobs on the onboarding team is I review all of the paperwork that comes in. There's a lot of credentials that they have to meet. There's a lot of background checks that need to be done and we need to make sure that they're all set up properly mm -hmm. uh, before they can move forward. So I review all that paperwork. I will send them feedback if needed. So say there's a couple things that need to be adjusted or fixed or they didn't set up the right fingerprinting appointment. I send them that feedback and I'll give them a new deadline on that. Um, once they return that paperwork to me and they're approved, I set them up on our systems, our timesheet system, our payroll system. They will move on to orientation with Amanda and Brianna. That's our live via Zoom orientation that we have. Um, and once they're complete with orientation, they move on to training overlaps with their coach. They get assigned an executive coach that will go out with them in the field and they'll do overlaps with them uh, right now in districts and schools. As far as you know, the purpose of this training areas we're gonna touch on, um, we're just gonna try our best to give you guys a brief overview of the company, let you know what everyone's roles are. Um, we'll try to anticipate some scenarios. We have a lot of like, you know, things we'll talk through but we can anticipate every scenario or every question. So we'll do our best to get you guys just really like set up and running working in the schools. So we'll talk about who we are, the coaching experience, some pairing, a lot we'll touch on is about school district considerations, some required documentation from you guys, um, like an employee overview. We'll talk about mandated reporting and crisis management, and then we'll get a little clinical, talk about some intro to ABA topics, measurement and data collection. We'll touch on working in the home setting, and then we'll end with ethics and uh, a lot of different scenarios in that one. So I'm Amanda Wolf. I'm the Executive Director of Organizational Behavior Development here. I do a lot with our recruitment onboarding, but most of my work involves our new hires. So one of the things I think is really nice that we do here at BDA, and a lot of companies do this, but like our new hire orientation. So maybe could you walk us through a little bit of what that looks like for someone just starting out? Sure, so we do, it's evolved a lot depending on the needs of the company, but it is a live training that we do over Zoom. Um, so we're able to give a lot of good information, but it also gives everyone the opportunity to ask questions in real time. There's a lot of discussion um, with Zoom. We're allowed to utilize like the polling features and the breakout room. So we do a lot of scenario based situations as well, which I think kind of gets people set up for what it'll really look like out in the field. 
Yeah, and I love that idea of like because it's live and they're talking to people that they're going to be working with. Because um, it's not just you, right? There's other people there? Yeah, so Brianna Snyder, she's a BCBA with the company. She's one of the other trainers as well. Yeah, so like, they get a chance to ask any questions that, that they might have. And it's, it's after they've already done all the onboarding and they've done their panel interviews. So some, hopefully some of the nerves are at least like lowered at that point. Um, it's like, do you find that you get a lot of questions from people because they feel like in that environment it's a little bit like safer for them or? Yes, and I think both of us do like a good job of trying to be really transparent with them. Kind of just like we, Brown and I share a lot of our own experiences. So we both have been in the field. She can provide that experience from like the BC role and I can provide it from being out in the field as a CA. And we really just share like, kind of like the lessons we wish we knew when we went yeah. through, but we didn't have them um, speak to the own experience. And I think that people see that and then they open up and they're in a place where they, you know, they see us for three hours. So they get to ask those questions um, and get kind of comfortable along the way. And there are certain points where we'll let them know, you know, we're not going to record this part. We want you to feel, you know, open with letting us know what are your fears about going into a school district or, you know, any concerns you might have and just create like a safe space for them. And it's like their own little group where they get to, they're not able to meet each other all in person, but at least they kind of form those relationships. And sometimes people know each other from other companies or they see each other, you know, in their placement together after orientation too. So they form their little, their little group together too. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's nice. We talked about this a little bit earlier where um, a, a lot of ABA agencies, you're kind of on your own island and you barely know anyone else in the, in the company. So like this is a, a chance for them after the hiring event, it, whether it was panel or uh, one of our like kind of parties, quote unquote, um, to then reconnect with other people and meet people and kind of get some names to faces. Because I think that's just so big um, when, because when, I've worked for, uh, for, for a very short period of time, I worked for an agency where it was what we do at BDA, like remote consultation in people's homes and things. And I never met a single person. I was there for like four or five months, but I never met anyone else outside of the, the guy who interviewed me was also the same guy who trained me. And then I didn't know who the BCBA was. I didn't know anybody. And that's like nerve wracking. And it made it really easy for me to quit because I didn't care. <laughs> I didn't know anybody. I was like, I just sent an email to literally it was like HR at the company's name. So I didn't even know who I was resigning to. You know, so do you feel like uh, in, in this kind of climate that we have right now where people are leaving their jobs in mass and going to find bigger, better things, do you feel like the new higher orientation has, plays a big part in our retention? I think so, and I think just letting them know the support that they're going to get. So they hear it from us. They're seeing us over a span of a couple of days who so are familiar faces as they start in the company, and we're able to tell them, like, you're not going to be given an address and sent and said, go do your job there. Good luck. Like, all the different support systems we have in place, we introduce the engagement team, let them know that they're going to be out there for support um, and just the coaching experience. We're able to kind of like you said, ease all their nerves and be like, hey, this is what it's gonna look like for you, so don't worry. And I feel like it just gets them set up for success in the company and working out in the field. We talked about before, everyone will be getting a coach. So whether you've been with BDA, you know, for five years or you just started, everyone has a coach. So Amanda and myself also have coaches um, and, you know, it just helps make sure everyone's accountable and kind of helps guide you into being whatever you know, you want to be great at within this field. Every leader will tell you that there, there's no dollar amount investment you can make on having someone next to you that, that you trust and, and you can, you know, work with and know that in the moment when shit's hitting the fan that you can rely on them. Because in every agency, shit hits the fan. No, yeah. no. And listen, you know, I, 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 I'm not the owner of this agency. Brett is. So there's a lot of trials and tribulations that I don't understand um, that CEOs go through when they start up their own, their own businesses or like CEOs of any business out there, even whether they started it or not. No matter what, shit hits the fan. There's never any agency that runs perfectly. So you have to have those people you trust and rely on. Mm -hmm. And that's not just like your administrators or anything like that. That's, you know, our behavior consultants. That's our clinical associates. Like, there are amazing people and you know there's people I know when there's a rough situation going on I can call them and they're going to be willing to help. It doesn't have to be the ABA industry. Like if yeah. you if we always talk about it here that we want to be we want to change the world with with this stuff. Like you know people are aware of OBM but it and people who even are unaware of OBM don't realize that they're using it in their in their in, in their industry their company whatever it might be. So you know, for somebody who's not necessarily in this field, 
there's things that they can take away from, you know, through, you know, I know we're going to be doing a bunch of stuff on this, but like just looking at recruitment and hiring, there's different things that they can take away from it to grow their agency. Mm -hmm. And that could be in the financial world, that can be, you know, for an auto shop. I really don't know of many other industries. <laughs> I, I guess I've been in this one for too long at this point. I'm like, what do other people do in the world? And, uh, <laughs> well, I mean, I'll say even restaurants, I think is the best example of people who could really benefit from a lot of things that we talk about, even in yeah. this, this episode yeah. alone. In human services, you don't have to make minimum wage. You do a lot of great things for a lot of people who need your help. Yeah. You deserve a lot more than that. So like, how do we start showing you know, other agencies in this industry that that's possible and everything? And there's a lot of, I think I've seen now more than ever, um, people compensating their employees more, mm -hmm. um, which excites me. And it, does it create a little competition for us? Like, yeah, because you know, we don't stick out as much as, as we used to, but we shouldn't. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, that, that's amazing. And then if you look at that, you take that same mindset and you look at a restaurant that, that's maybe struggling and maybe they're a steakhouse and you know, all of a sudden they're like, guys, like, you know what? We're gonna bring in the best meats we can ever find. That's what we're gonna invest our money to and we're gonna bring in a great chef and we're gonna compensate him or her more than what they're making right now. They're investing your resources, plus we'll set up these contingencies for them to be able to make more money. Yeah. They're resources that a lot of people might think like, oh, you know, things aren't going the right way. Like we can't spend resources, we can't do this. Like you have to make sure that you're compensating your, your people who are, who are the driving force in the agency success like they should. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's something we do. I know I went completely off. No, target, you're, good. But <laughs> you're good. But I think, I think that's a, a great place to end too because it, it, it helps us kind of shift into a lot of the conversations we had earlier. But, but I don't like shutting up. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Jason. <laughs> Always a pleasure, man.